Hi, this is Tim. In the last video, we went through how to connect milliamp signals to your voltage inputs on your Allen Bradley Micro 820 PLC and how to scale them in the Connected Components Workbench software so you could see a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. But we were left with a small dilemma at the end that our scale is 4 to 20 milliamp. But if we drop down to 2 milliamp, then our scaled value will go on down below. And sometimes that's fine, but in many cases, it's not. Uh, say this was going to an actual analog output, then you wouldn't want the value going beyond the scaled range. Also, when we get into PID instructions, we'll need to prevent that from happening so that we don't end up with this huge integral wind up. We'll explain all that later. But when I started laying out how I was going to prevent this in this ladder program, it got messy really fast. So I thought it was a very good time to go through using a user-defined function block in a program because this is really easy to write in structured text. But especially if you're in the North American market, most of your PLC programs are gonna be mostly ladder logic. So we're gonna start with the program that we left off with in our milliamp video. And we're gonna right click our user-defined function blocks and we're gonna add a structured text function block. And let's go ahead and name this, and let's just name it limit value. Then we're gonna to need to create some local variables for it. So let's create an input value, and that'll be a real. And then let's create an output value. And that'll also be a real. And those are gonna be, so our input value is gonna be the value that is coming in from that scaling that we already did. Our output value is gonna be the one that's in that limit. So then we need our limits. So let's just call this scaled minimum or min, and that'll be a real. And then a scaled max, and that'll be a real. Enable in. And that'll be a boolean and then enable out which will also be a boolean now let's open up that user defined function block so we have a limit value and just have a really basic blank structured text program so just start typing enable and there goes out and then we're going to type a colon equals and enable in And we're just going to use some basic if then statements to look at that input value and to determine if it's out of that range. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to determine whether our function block is enabled or not. Because remember, just like we've talked about in other instructions, an instruction that is true does something, but also an instruction that's false does something. And we're only going to worry about when it's true. So we're going to do if. And if you're not sure of these, if you notice as soon as you type that I, all your options come up for that. And then we're gonna look at the enable in. And that's all we need to put. If enabled in means that if enabled in is true. And then with every if statement, there is also at the end of it an end if. And so what this says is that as long as enable in is true, do everything that's in between this end up. So we're going to add another couple of if then statements to actually look at these values. Now we can type if here and it'll be just fine, but just to organize our code, you can hit that tab button and I'll kind of bring it in and that lets us know, okay, this is this layer's if then. And then we're going to type another if. Then we're going to have pretty much three conditions that we need to do if thens for. Either our value is gonna be within the range of our min and max, and we can shoot that on through, great. Or our value is gonna to be too high, which means that if we're at 21 milliamp, then we're gonna to need to put 20 in it. Or our range is too low. So let's say we're at two milliamp, we'll need to put that four in it. We're gonna be looking at our input value. And first, if it is greater than and this will be our minimum value, so scaled minimum, and then close parentheses, and our input value is less than, oh, 
And I just realized I made a mistake on the first one. That should have been less than or equal to. We'll fix that first one in just a second. So less than or equal to our scaled max. I'm gonna close that one. Right over here, this should have been less than or equal to. And also, oh, I forgot a parenthesis. So that whole group here needs a parenthesis. That way it's if, and it's gonna evaluate all of this. If I'd left this first group of parentheses out, it would only evaluate this part. So if both of those are true, and then we're gonna put a then statement. And in this case, we'll just put our output value is going to equal, well actually it's not equal, because this is a compare statement. It is gonna be colon equal, which tells it to move the value. So our output value will equal our input value. And then we put a colon to say the end of that line. And then we're also going to end this end if. So end if. Now that doesn't end our other end if. So now we're going to do another if then. If, and then again, we're going to look at that input value. And if it is greater than our scaled max, then our output value is going to equal our scaled max. We'll put a semicolon, and then we're gonna end that if, and then let's do one more for if it's too low. So if our input value is less than our scaled min, then our output value is going to equal our scaled min, colon, and then we'll end that if. I know that's a lot of ifs and thens and in ifs and everything, but really once you start learning structured text, you can do a whole lot with it. Now in a later video, we're actually going to discuss whether it's always a good idea to do structured text just because you can do a lot with it. Because you also have to think about the guy who's got to troubleshoot these when they break. But in this case, we're not actually doing a machine function. We're just fixing a value just in case it's out of range. So that's going to be it for that. So we'll go ahead now and we're going to go back up to our program. So this analog milliamp scaled is the one that was looking like it was going to be off. So let's go ahead and add an instruction block. And now we can type limit value. And there you go. There's our user defined instruction block that we made. And none of our variables are there because I forgot to declare these as input and output variables in their local variables. So let's go back down here to limit value and local variables. So we have like this scaled input value and right now direction is just an internal variable. We want it to be an input variable. The output value, that's an output variable. The minimum input, that's gonna be an input because these are things that are, think about it this way, these are things that are normally on the left side of that instruction. The outputs are on the right side of the instruction. So our max, is going to be an input variable and then our enable in is going to be an input variable and our enable out is going to be an output variable okay so now let's go back i don't know yeah, i think we have to delete that out now and then we'll just put it right back in so hit that instruction block again and let's type limit and there's our limit value Ah, now it looks much better. It's got all of its things in there. To our input value, we're going to make this analog milliamp scaled. And then our minimum, we're gonna make 4.0. Our scaled max is going to be 20.0. And then we have the enable in, and right now we're just gonna make it true. And then we're gonna have an output off of this. And so let's just make this analog scaled in range real. And that's it. 
Also, let's just look at a few other things on this um, user defined function block. Uh, mainly, let's say we didn't like the order that these were in. If you go to parameters here, then you can actually change the order of these. You can just click them, drag them around. Now I like the order they're in, but as you're tidying them up, you might decide you like that. So let's go ahead and download that and see how it works. Oh, got a build error. Ah, and if you followed me exactly, then I forgot to put the semicolon on that first line. So click that and let's go ahead and hit that build button, see if we have any more errors. Well, yes we do. Okay, and yeah, all right, so first of all, yeah, you can tell that I don't do this perfectly every time, but they have a really good description of the errors when you have these problems. So here it's saying that it expected a then before this new if, and yes, right here, just like here, I put if condition and then, up here I didn't, I forgot the then here. So then, so let's go ahead and build that again. Uh-oh, I ended up with even more errors that time. Okay, and I'm famous for leaving out the semicolon. So yeah, each one of these end ifs, I forgot the semicolons on. So let's try to build that one more time. And it looks like I still forgot a semicolon. Yes, I did on this very last end if I forgot the semicolon. Yeah, so if you were looking for perfect YouTube videos, then you probably need to find somebody else's channel. We make mistakes together and we learn from them. Okay, and so this time it built without any errors. So let's go ahead and download that. All right, let's go over to our new limit instruction and see what it's doing. All right, our scaled milliamp value is zero because in the time that we've been adding this, our milliamp simulator is going into power save mode but our scaled input within a range is four, which is exactly what we wanted. So now let's power up our simulator and let's start bringing its value up. So now we're at four milliamp and we're showing four milliamp. We go down to three though, we're showing four on our scaled value. So let's go up to the other side Let's just, well, let's stop at 17, make sure, yeah, we're showing about 17. And all right, at 20, we are showing 20. But if we get a 21, then we're showing only 20 here. So that'll hold our value within that 4 to 20 milliamp range. I hope this video has been helpful. We learned how to create a user-defined function block, which was kind of neat. We also did a little structured text programming. We also learned how to find our errors because I had quite a few errors in this one. And that's part of the fun of this channel is while I try to bring you content to help you learn, a lot of you guys' questions really stretch me also. So thank you for all the questions that you do ask. If there's something you're curious about, put it in the comments and yeah, we'll look into it and see if we can do a video on it. We're gonna build off of this in an upcoming series. We're gonna start a PID series and this is gonna be a very important part of this. That's why I wanted to go ahead and get this exercise done. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Till next time. Hey, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.